A concussion is often thought to be a physical injury to the brain, but it's actually more of a functional dysfunction of the brain. Whenever um, an injury has occurred that um, has either been due to a direct hit or a rotational force, um, there will be a disruption in the normal function of the brain. My most recent concussion happened almost a year ago from today. It was during a football practice. My, my memory on it, even though it's been a year, is still very fuzzy. We were doing some sort of drill. I heard a loud noise, and the next thing I know, I was sitting about 10 feet away with my helmet off. I think it originally happened in practice the day before a match, but I was unaware of this at the time. I remember right after the match feeling sick. The trainer came over to me and just asked me if everything was like feeling all right. I didn't really know what was going on, but my emotions got really crazy and I started crying. So symptoms come from three different domains. The first is cognitive, uh, how you think, how well you think, how fast you think, how you focus, how well you remember. Uh, then the second set uh, in are somatic, so how you feel. Headache, dizzy, nausea, maybe even vomiting, rarely. Trouble with your vision, perhaps, uh, those sort of things. And then the last set are emotional, so more quick to get upset, more quick to get angry, more quick to get down, and just kind of more up and down and fast switching between emotions. When a student athlete has been diagnosed with a concussion, the athletic trainer will call the parents immediately and inform them of that diagnosis. They'll also educate them on what a concussion is, signs and symptoms to look for that evening, and reasons that they may want to report to the ER. They'll inform them of how the concussions are properly treated, um, including rest, taking time away from the screen, taking time away from their phones. And if their child wakes up the next day and their concussion symptoms are worse or more severe, um, they may want to stay home from school the next day. When I found out about it, I'm thinking, okay, I'll go get him, we'll get him home. He'll be home from school for a couple of days, maybe a week. He'll be out of football for a week or two. I never thought that it would be that he would be out of commission for three months. I never thought he would be struggling so hard in school um, that he would have such long-term effects. Couldn't think clearly for so long. And not to mention, it was hard to walk and move around and just remember who people were. So until I could accomplish just the day-to-day -day tasks, it was hard to even imagine going back to school. So whenever I first came back to school, on the first couple weeks, I spent most of my time in the trainers, and I just had like no energy. Whenever I'd actually go to class, I the teacher would be up there like talking and teaching on the whiteboard and I, I would like stare at the board but not comprehend anything. Trying to take notes on what was said, my handwriting was so like sloppy that it would like frustrate me to a point where I would just set the pencil down and like not. And then at the end of the day, I had no clue what I just listened to. It's very important for a student athlete to be diagnosed as early as possible. If they are not properly diagnosed in a timely manner, they will still be engaging in activities that could be making those symptoms worse. They also are setting themselves up for the possibility of having a second concussion, which would compound upon the first and maybe have long-term effects. The second impact syndrome is some sort of you get a concussion, you get a blow to the body or the head that leads to a concussion and continue to play and they get a second concussion. And so you get an increase in pressure inside the head and a death that can occur from that increased pressure. Now, thankfully that's very rare in the United States, but it does happen several times across the U.S. every year. Easily preventable if you know you have a concussion coming out reduces the risk of that almost entirely. When it comes to a concussion, remember to take a seat. Look for signs and symptoms. Exit the game or practice. Get assessed by an athletic trainer or other medical professional. Take time to recover before returning to school or sport. Communication is, is key across that uh, spectrum, whether that's the parents, the kid, the athlete, the athletic trainer, the coach. Everybody has a vested interest in that individual and they want the best for them. 
So having everybody on the same page, that way we're all communicating the same message and all making sure that appropriate uh, activities and appropriate inactivities are taking place. I think the communication was great, honestly, because kind of it all started working together and got me back in, I think, probably faster than it would have if I would have just sat there and stared at the board and not got anything out of it. You know, it's not something to be ashamed of because it's an uncontrollable situation. You need to take a step back and really talk with a physician or at the very minimum the athletic trainer at your school just to figure out what needs to be done from here because in the in the end what matters is healing. The, the most important thing is if the young person is following through with the medical advice uh, then hopefully we will be getting them back to the sport as quickly and as safely as we can. When a student athlete is symptom free, they can start a gradual return to play, return to daily activities that do not provoke symptoms, begin light aerobic activities such as walking or stationary cycling at a slow to medium pace, no resistance training at this step, start participating in sport specific exercises including running or skating drills, do not yet participate in any activity where head impact is a possibility. Next, the athlete may progress to non-contact training drills. These drills can be more difficult and the athlete may start progressive resistance training. With success in the previous steps, the athlete may now return to full contact practice participation. And finally, if the athlete remains symptom free, they may resume a total return to play or sport. Athletes should contact an athletic trainer or sports medicine physician to help guide a successful return to play. For more information about concussions or to find a sports medicine physician, visit coxhealth.com.